Catania is the end of the line for a small railroad that encircles Mount Etna, the Ferrovia Circumetnia. In the heart of Catania, various remnants that date back to Roman times indicate the glorious past of the second largest city in Sicily, although its origins are far older. Immigrants from Chalcis founded it in the 8th century BC, but today nothing remains of the Greek city. The city is strongly influenced by Baroque architecture. Historic buildings are quite rare in Catania due to the fact that the daughter of Etna has been destroyed by several natural disasters. The city's proximity to the most powerful volcano in Europe brought great misfortune to the people of antiquity. An earthquake and volcanic eruption in the 17th century dwarfed all the other catastrophes that preceded them. Since the last great earthquake in 1693, Catania and all the churches and monuments that were built in subsequent years have been spared further destruction. Almost all of the city's impressive buildings are of Baroque design give the historic part of the city a particularly distinctive character. The Duomo di Sant'Agata contains several tombs of the Aragon monarchy, as well as being the final resting place of the famous Sicilian composer Vincenzo Bellini. Several elegant palazzi frame the main square of the Duomo, the Piazza del Duomo. Catania's city hall is located in the Palazzo degli Elefante. The most dominant building in the square is the cathedral, which was completed in 1768 and is a masterpiece of Baroque design. Elephant Fountain is also one of the city's most famous landmarks. The elephant sculpture of the Fontana dell'Elefante consists of volcanic lava rock. In addition to the Elephant Fountain, the majority of Catania's other buildings were the work of a gifted architect, Giovanni Battista Vaccarini. After taking in some of the city's cultural monuments, a visit to the local fish market adds some light relief. It's a lively and colourful place.
And after experiencing Catania's atmospheric fish market, we visit the beautifully laid out Villa Bellini Park. The journey round Mount Etna begins in the small and unspectacular station of the privately owned Ferrovia Circum Etnia Narrow Gauge Railway. This railroad once travelled to Catania's harbour. Today, the line ends in the middle of the city. But the simplicity of this railroad belies the fact that a journey along it is an absolute must. The Ferrovia Circumetnia is not only a tourist attraction, it's still used by many of the local people. A couple of kilometers outside Catania, there are vast, fertile fields. In the background is the mighty, at over 3,000 meter high, Mount Etna, one of the most active and famous volcanoes in the world. The history of the railroad around Mount Etna began at the end of the 19th century, when it was important that Sicily's remote cities had ready access to the seaport of Catania. The journey on the Ferrovia Circumetnia travels through some exceptionally beautiful scenery and contains a number of picturesque farms. The land owes its fertility to Mount Etna. Despite its destructive force, the fertile volcanic ground is ideal for agriculture. The journey by narrow gauge railway around Etna is one of the most captivating train journeys in Italy. Again and again, charming small villages and towns pass by. Certain sections of the journey lead through vast fields of lava that are in stark contrast to the wonderful scenery. The close proximity of Etna manifests itself by magnificent views of the volcano that the Sicilians affectionately refer to as Mongebello, the beautiful mountain. The name of the volcano originated from the beauty of the surrounding scenery that still continues to attract people from all over the world. Randazzo is well worth a visit, while the train of the Ferrovia Circumetnia continues its journey round Etna. Although the small village of Randazzo is located only 15 kilometers from the volcano, the village has been miraculously spared the destructive might of its lava. This small town, that has a population of 12,000, was affected by the Second World War when the German army, the Wehrmacht, was stationed here. Although the air raids of the Allied forces created much damage to the town, it has since been fully restored. The town's churches are particularly interesting and are well worth a closer look during any visit to Randazzo. The 
houses radiate a unique charm. Many of the town's historic buildings are built of lava. A noteworthy aspect of Randazzo was the composition of the town's population, as up until the 20th century, it consisted of three different language groups. They were based on Greek, Latin and Lombard. Over the course of time, various settlers moved here and formed three residential districts in the town. The medieval archways in the centre of the town are particularly striking. The main flowering periods of the idyllic town of Rondazzo took place under the Stoffers and Aragons, who also left their traces here. People of Lombard, Latin and Byzantine origin also built their own churches in the old town. Lava rock, the traditional building material of this region, can be found in almost all of Randazzo's houses and churches, no matter what the past cultural affiliation of their respective inhabitants. The Campanile, the pretty bell tower of the Chiesa San Martino, dates back to the 13th century and is part of the original church. Close by, through some beautiful lanes, is Randazzo's Normanic Cathedral. The Chiesa Santa Maria was given its neo-Gothic facade in the 19th century. The bell tower was also added at that time. Most visitors to Randazzo are immediately attracted to it. The next train is ready to depart from the tiny station. The journey on the Ferrovia Sokometnia continues. Along the railway line, nothing is to be seen of the lava that often came to a stop only metres from the town. The fertile soil of Mount Etna's surroundings has always attracted settlers. In this part of Sicily, agriculture still plays an important role. On weekdays, the trains are full of the chatter of local schoolchildren. The journey on the narrow gauge railroad provides several opportunities to gain a further insight into this region. The lush green of the landscape is in captivating contrast to the darker buildings constructed of lava rock that is evident in so many of Etna's villages. farmland and wilderness blend into each other. The founding of this region's farming settlements dates back to ancient times.
The next stop is the station of Lingua Glossa. The name of this village, which translated means large tongue, refers to the stream of lava that Etna left here in 1634. This village of five and a half thousand inhabitants is located around 500 meters above sea level. Lingua Glossa is particularly popular as a starting point for various walks in the vicinity of the volcano. Lingua Glossa was first mentioned in 1145 at the time of the Normans. As with many other villages in the Etna region, this village is also influenced by Baroque architecture. Unlike Randazzo, Lingua Glossa is not known so much for its cultural and historic attractions, but for its culinary specialities. The legendary salami of Lingua Glossa is to be found in each of its butcher's shops. The dark red Etna wine, the Vigno Nero Mascalesi, is also extremely popular. While visiting this charming village, a look around its main church is highly recommended. It's a veritable gem, and its interior contains a priceless altar made of cherry wood. But Lingua Gloss's most striking feature is its exceptional location at the foot of the great Mount Etna, or Mongebello. Thick clouds of smoke encircle the snow-covered summit of Etna that is not only the most active volcano in Europe, but also its highest. To get even closer to the fire-spitting mountain, one can either travel on foot or take the softer option of getting there by car or bus. During the ascent, we travel past various of Etna's vegetation zones that at their highest point of around 3,370 meters add to its imposing appearance. Even at the foot of Mongebello, the volcano is very impressive and has a total circumference of around 212 kilometers. Next, we arrive at an unusual bus station. From a height of 1900 meters, the majestic mountain provides some magnificent views. good weather and during times of low volcanic activity, it's possible to travel by four-wheel drive buses in order to reach Etna's more recently created lava fields. The final few meters to a small mountain cavern must be undertaken on foot. Large quantities of carbon dioxide are constantly emitted from Etna's crater. However, the crater's white smoke is normally quite harmless. Even though the volcano is active throughout the year, eruptions are still relatively rare. The last large eruption was in 2002. In that year, a large part of the aerial railway was covered by Etna's red-hot lava and was destroyed. Indeed, it's still being rebuilt.
It is particularly at night that one can witness one of the most amazing natural spectacles in Europe when the scenery is illuminated by the fiery mountain. Following our visit to Mount Etna, the journey on the Ferrovia Circumetnia proceeds from Lingua Glossa. Isolated ruins give the scenery a melancholy ambience. The importance of the railway as a vital means of transport for the local population is still evident in the rural regions of this area of Sicily. The train travels past agricultural land in which both vines and citrus fruits are grown as it gradually meanders on its single track to a higher altitude. From the unhurried train, there are marvelous views of the landscape that is located in the environs of Mount Etna. The higher reaches of the mountain, at around two and a half thousand meters above sea level, are for the most part without any vegetation. Huge lava deserts cover the flanks of the volcano, a surreal and fascinating world of natural rock. Most of the trains of the Ferrovia Circumetnia date back to the 1950s and have put in many years of good service. A total of six trains travel the complete railroad, while others cover only certain sections of it. Trains travel at a leisurely speed. For the 114 kilometer journey, the narrow gauge railroad takes a total of three and a half hours. The fact that the gates are still lowered manually adds even more character to the experience of traveling on the Ferrovia Circumetnia. There can be no other more romantic and captivating way to travel in Sicily than on this small railroad at the base of Mount Etna. The contrast between the lush green of the meadowland and the rocky wasteland of old lava fields could not be more striking. In some areas, the scenery is quite haunting. Yet in around 200 years time, the lava fields here will have been transformed into fertile land. Riposto is the final station for the trains of the Ferrovia Circumetnia. The train station and its old rail cars provide a good degree of nostalgia for railway enthusiasts from far and wide. Nearby Riposto adds a totally different perspective. Colourful old houses reflect the zest for life enjoyed by their inhabitants. Riposto has several interesting historic buildings, some of which display the influences of the Sicily of ancient times. This former fishing village has around 14,000 inhabitants. Despite increasing tourism, the town has managed to retain its original character. Its fun-filled squares and streets still radiate the peace and intimacy of village life, particularly outside the busy holiday season.
The economic prosperity of Riposto began in the second half of the 19th century when the production of locally cultivated wine was at its zenith. And just like a good wine, a ride on the Ferrovia Sacametnia improves with age. This must be the most atmospheric way in which to discover the remarkable Mount Etna. <laughs>